my, my mom, she's funny. My mom will like save up all her tech questions for the year. And then I just have to troubleshoot every electronic device in the house. <laughs> like I'm not her son anymore. I'm just a Mac genius when I walk through the door. I'm like, is there a problem? Have you put it in rice? <laughs> and it sucks because I have to think of a mom version of the answer, something she can do on her own. And it's impossible. Cause she'll be like, Fahim, how do I get the picture from my digital camera to my iPhone? And in my head, I'm like, okay, she's got to get a USB cable, connect the camera to the desktop, open up the camera like an external hard drive, pull the files onto the desktop, open up Gmail, attach the files, send an email to herself, open up Gmail on her iPhone, save the pictures to her camera roll. Fuck. It's like an Apollo 13 mission. You know? <laughs> so I'm just racking my brain. I'm like, okay, uh, here's gonna wanna do, mom. Load up the picture on the camera and then take a picture of the picture. <laughs> it's the best I can do for you. I'm not gonna be around all the time. So now my mom's Facebook timeline is just a bunch of fucked up aspect ratios. <laughs> this is like the Star Wars text. <laughs> Middle Eastern parents, like, uh, they, they just, yeah, there are some Middle Eastern people here. Yeah, yeah. You're scaring the white people. <laughs> I like it. We're taking Irvine over for a night. <laughs> They just, Middle Eastern parents, they expect so much from you. It's almost like Herculean what they want you to be. And you can't even, like, like, like I have an engineering degree, a mechanical engineering degree. I worked, at, I worked at Boeing. I worked at Boeing for a few years. I've been in some TV. I've been in some movies. I was on some billboards. Not enough for my dad, you know? <laughs> like, I should be a doctor. And I was thinking, I think my dad would lay off the gas a little bit if I tried to kill myself. <laughs> Because then there's nowhere to go but up, you know? People would be like, oh, how's your son Faim doing? He's like, oh, he's great. He's eating more. <laughs> he went for a walk today. He's great, yeah. I remember when I told them I did stand up, it was like telling them I'm gay, pretty much, you know? <laughs> and then I thought, like, what if you're Middle Eastern and gay? Like, how hard that must be. And I think that's why a lot of them come out later in life, you know, in their 30s and 40s. It's not like white people where they're like, this is Travis, our 18th month old, he's gay. <laughs> yeah. He can't talk yet, but he's definitely gay as fuck. <laughs> We're just proud of him. We're just supporting him on this journey he's on. It'd be so hard to come out to a Middle Eastern dad, you know? Like, dad, I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I'm gay. And he'd be like, can I tell my friends you're bi? <laughs> Just meet me halfway. I think a Middle Eastern dad would prefer a bi son. He'd be proud, like my son fucks women and men. Your son just fucks women. <laughs> My son fucks everyone. <laughs> Abdul is an HR nightmare. <laughs> Whenever I'm home, they just, my parents, they complain about Trump a lot, you know. I don't know, some people are so surprised at what happened with Trump. I'm not really surprised because I've seen it before. Like we all thought Trump was so ridiculous. He wasn't gonna gain any real steam. But that's exactly what we all thought about Pitbull. <laughs> I feel like while everybody was busy shitting on Nickelback, Pitbull was in the background. <laughs> I love Pitbull. Pitbull's made a whole career out of wearing a white tux. <laughs> He'd be like, Mr. Yo, bath. 
It's the world wide. Do the rest of the song, Black Eyed Peas. <laughs> what if Pitbull took his sunglasses off and he just had no eyeballs? <laughs> But I think Islam, we have bad PR, you know? Because even me saying Allah Akbar, it's terrifying. It's like some of you are nervous right now. Because in the, in the movies, whenever someone says Allah Akbar, bad stuff happens. So I've been trying to give us a facelift. What I've been doing, I've been going around town performing random acts of kindness while yelling Allah Akbar. <laughs> so I'll open up a door for an old white lady and be like, Allah Akbar! Sweet young man. I guess they're not all the same. Yeah, just like middle. Like all, I read the news almost every week. There's an article about Middle Eastern people being kicked off planes because other passengers thought that they might be terrorists, which is shitty. You know, it's fucked up. If you're white, you don't really think about it that much. It would be like if you were on a plane and the flight attendant walked up to you and was like, "Excuse me, sir. Everyone here thinks you're a pedophile." <laughs> And you're like, but I don't fuck kids. And like, we can't take that risk. <laughs> There's a lot of kids on this flight. We just need you to leave. But I get it. I understand the fear. You know, sometimes if I haven't shaved for a while and like I catch a glimpse of myself at LAX, I'll be like, get him. <laughs> but it's not a good feeling to think that other people might be worried about you. So if... If I'm at the airport and I, and I, I look kind of terroristy that day, <laughs> what I'll do, I'll just make sure that when I'm boarding my flight, I'm holding a Starbucks cup. <laughs> this pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> the only thing I'm gonna attack is the morning, you know? Not everyone gets that joke. Some people are like, who's the morning? <laughs> Is it the weekend's cousin? You have to warn them. You ever notice whenever there's a terror attack, they always come on the news and they're like, ISIS has taken credit for the attack. Every time. And you're like, yeah, ISIS is in the business of terror. Like, of course they're gonna claim every bad thing. Like, there's not gonna be an explosion. And ISIS is like, that was dope, but that wasn't us. <laughs> Fuck, I wish it was us. <laughs> Who was it? Al-Qaeda? Game recognized game. <laughs> they push us, they push us to be better. <laughs> A lot of these guys, you know, they think they're gonna get 72 virgins up there if they blow themselves up. That's great if you're straight, you know, but what if you're not straight? <laughs> Right? How do they recruit them? Like, so there's gonna be 72 hot guys up there. <laughs> you go, yeah, yeah, they all have six packs and shit. Yeah, they all want to suck your dick. Hmm. And they're all Puerto Rican. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're all Puerto Rican. Okay, fine. Ready for me, boys! <laughs> this is the most fabulous bombing you've ever seen. Is that glitter? <laughs> I have another part to that joke, but I, I wonder if it's too much for Irvine. I don't know if you can <laughs> It might be too dark for her. Do it. All right, all right. Uh, all right, so the, the Manchester bomber, I feel like that was a gay suicide bomber because he did it at an Ariana Grande concert. <laughs> and he detonated it after the concert. <laughs> after. They're texting him like, why haven't you done it yet? And he's like, I'll do it when I do it. And I, 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 I got me moving side to side. Yes! What time is it? I'm late for work. <laughs> It's 
Isn't it crazy we're like living in the future? You don't really think about it that much. Like I was thinking if you were talking to someone from the past, and they're like, what's the future like? And you're like, oh man, there's like so many scooters. <laughs> Yeah, there's like eight companies that make scooters. It's fucking crazy. So there's no flying cars? No, just like a fuck ton of scooters. Yeah, it's dope though, it's dope. Why is it so cool? Because you can just like leave it there, you know? You're not responsible for the scooter. You can just like fuck off and just leave it there. You can just like chuck the scooter. It doesn't matter, it's not your scooter. You gotta be there, it's hard to explain. It's pretty dope. The Uber Eats thing, like they're always, they're always updating restaurants on there. Like every week there's a new one. And I was on there the other day and I saw that like now you can get a cheese pizza from Chuck E. Cheese on Uber Eats. <laughs> but I'm thinking like, who, who's that for? Not, I think it's for the guy who got banned from Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> and that's as close as you can get to the place now, you know? It's like, was there a birthday party? <laughs> Who's getting that? Like, oh, we're doing pizzas? Fucking two Chuck E. Cheese larges, bro. It's my shit. Dude, have you seen the band live? <laughs> Top five concerts I've ever been to. Coachella 2011, Chuck E. Cheese on a Wednesday. Chuck E. ripped. Another weird thing I saw, recently I saw a coupon for the Plan B pill. Yeah, that's out there, that exists. And I'm thinking, who's using that? Because like, if you're a woman and you have to get the Plan B pill, I imagine it's already awkward to begin with. And then to add a layer on top of that. To be like, oh, by the way, I have a coupon. <laughs> also, if you're using a coupon for the Plan B pill, it makes it seem like Plan B is your Plan A. <laughs> Like how, like, how does he not have Alzheimer's by now? And that's, you know what I mean? Like, no one gets hit in the face that many times and is like, yeah, I live a pretty good life. <laughs> yeah, it worked out for me. <laughs> they, have, they have a test now for Alzheimer's. You could take a test. And I'm thinking, like, who would take that test? Because there's no cure for Alzheimer's. Like, why would you want to know that? The doctor's like, the blood work came back and um, you're definitely going to get Alzheimer's. So here's what to expect. You're gonna think about it every day. It's gonna consume you. Then one day, you're gonna start to forget about it. <laughs> and that's the Alzheimer's kicking in. So your copay is $15. <laughs> My buddy, he's too much, he's too into porn. He's like, dude, you gotta do the VR porn, man. You get the goggles. <laughs> I don't, that's a slippery slope. I don't wanna go full golem. You know what I mean? Like, like I live here now. <laughs> I'm a pimp in this world. Also, at least with porn now, if somebody walks in on you, you can play it off. You can throw the magazine across the room or you can close the laptop real quick. How the fuck do you play that off? Like, oh, hey, what's up, bro? What are you doing? VR tour of the Grand Canyon? Why do you have a boner? I love nature. I've told you that I love nature. What's, what's with the lotion? It's a dry heat out here. It's, just, it's a dry heat. Does anybody remember jerking off to photos? Like, that, like it seems ancient at this point. That almost shows you how dumb the male brain is, where you could see a, a naked woman on a page and your dick is like, better get ready. <laughs> like nothing is gonna happen, this is just a page, but your dick's like, you don't know that. She could become alive. A lightning bolt could hit it. Yeah, some kids don't even remember that time. It's just weird getting older, you know? The thing is you can't say you're old, because there's always someone older than you who's like, fuck you, I'm old. And there's someone older than that guy like, fuck both of you, I'm old. 
it's like, how far does it go? It's like when I was a kid and I would complain, my mom, she'd be like, you know, there's someone out there with no arms. <laughs> and I'd be like, yeah, it you right. <laughs> they do have arms. But then I thought, what do you tell the guy with no arms when he complains? Like, man, fuck this. <laughs> you know, there's a guy out there with no arms or legs. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> do have legs. What do you tell the guy with no arms or legs? He's just a torso in a wheelbarrow. <laughs> like, fuck this. Hey, there's a guy out there who's just a bag of skin. <laughs> yeah, I do have bones. <laughs> It's pretty nice having a rib cage. What do you tell the bag of skin guy? Like, ah, ah, kill me. Hey, actually, you're pretty fucked up. You can complain. You, it's okay for you to complain. Sometimes I do that joke, and people in the crowd are like, oh, like that bag of skin guy exists. <laughs> like he's at the show. Like, hey, fuck you. I came here to take my mind off of being a bag of skin. Not be reminded of it. I'm out of here. There's some couples out tonight. You know, my buddy was telling me, because a lot of times couples will fight about where to eat. He was saying, don't, don't ask her where she wants to eat. Say, guess where we're gonna eat. And then take her to the first place she says. Women love this idea, you know? Yeah. That's great if you're like a fucking millionaire <laughs> as a guy. Because when you frame it like, guess what we're gonna eat, no girl's gonna give a reasonably priced place. Right? Like, babe, guess what we're gonna eat? Morton Steakhouse? Close. Chipotle. <laughs> No guac. <laughs> no guac. <laughs> you ever been in enough relationships you can just spot fights now, you know? Like, you ever just see a couple in a parked car, sitting in a parked car, you're like, oh, that's not good. <laughs> like, no couple is sitting in a parked car like, babe, our relationship is going so well, I just wanted to hang out in this Ford Fusion. We never hang out in the Ford Fusion for 30 minutes like we used to do. Yeah. I broke up with my girlfriend recently. Thank you. Things were going good, but I just needed new material, so. <laughs> just kidding. No. It's hard knowing that if she wants to, she just has like hundreds of dicks out there waiting for her. Just because even if you're in a relationship, know your girl gets hit on several times a day and those dicks just stack up <laughs> behind a damn wall. And when you break up, the wall breaks and she's just boogie boarding on a sea of dicks. Like, woo! Woo! Her hairs are still all over my place. I think that's why women have long hair. You're like, good luck forgetting about me. <laughs> You'll be 80 years old, like, fucking Sarah. Get out of my head. We were together three years. That's a long time. I, f I feel like I got really far in a video game. <laughs> then I just died, you know? Like, I, I hit the boss level. I feel like you don't want to grow as a person. <laughs> Choose your level. Coffee shop. What do you do for fun? I'm fucking back here. I gotta hold my farts in? I unlocked that achievement already. What the fuck? She was in her 30s. It's, it's hard when you like, when you date a girl in her 30s and you end up not getting married because you, you're like a villain as the guy, you know? Everyone's just like, you wasted her time. <laughs> like I wanted it to work. Am I just supposed to marry her because she's in her 30s? Like, how's the marriage going? Terrible, but at least I'm not wasting her time. <laughs> I'm just wasting my life. <laughs> Who gives a fuck about a man's life? A woman's time is very precious. 
Dating a girl in their 30s is very different than dating a girl in their 40s. 30s, it's always a race against time, you know, kids, marriage. 40s, she already has kids, she's already been divorced. One time I dated a girl in her 40s and I was like, what are we? And she said, stop being such a little faggot. <laughs> So I'll hear from women, they'll be like, I just want a guy to walk up to me at Trader Joe's. And just ask me on a date. Oh, you mean like a sociopath? <laughs> I couldn't help but notice you in the frozen food section. What are you doing this Saturday? Not like this. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Also, it's kind of scary dating post Me Too. Like, you don't know where the line is and stuff, you know? Like, like I don't even have sex with chicks anymore. I just jizz into a cup, and I'm like, that's yours. You can do whatever you want with that. That's... <laughs> like, dirty texting is scary now, too. Like, you don't know. Like, one time a girl sent me a topless photo, and I was like, fuck, I don't know. So she would see, like, three dots, and then it would go away. And then she would see three dots, and then it would go away. And then like nothing for 30 minutes. And then I just sent a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> Whoop.